In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Classic Connect on your iPod. Step 1. Remove the power cable. Gently open the latch from the black side. Be careful not to use too much force or you could break it. Once it's open, you can remove the cable. Step 2. Apply the double-sided tape to the battery. Place it right under the B port. Then reinstall the cable. Push it in with your fingernails or a pair of tweezers to make sure it's all the way in. Close the latch to keep the cable secure. Step 3. Install the driver board. Peel off the adhesive backing and stick the board onto the back panel. Make sure the red and black wires don't get tangled. Leave about 3 millimeters of space between the driver board and the frame. Otherwise, the iPod won't fit back together. If you're using the same M-Court adapter shown in the video, place it here. If you're using a CF adapter, place it in the lower left corner instead. Make sure to leave about 3 millimeters of space from the frame. Use clear or anti-static tape to insulate the driver board. You can also stick the copper wire down to make it look neater. Now we've finished preparing Classic Connect. Step 4. Install the cables. Insert the audio cable into this latch. Watch how I open it. Not from the black side, but from the grey-brown side. This latch is quite fragile, so open it gently. Push the cable in carefully until it's fully inserted. Then close the latch carefully. That's the first cable done. Next, install the power cable into the battery connector in the bottom right corner. Don't pry the connector or you might break it. Just push the cable straight in. Then test the device before you start gluing. Step 5. 
apply B7000 glue. Apply the glue evenly around the classic connect. Make sure to apply it to the inside of the frame. Just a small amount is enough. Don't place glue too near to the buttons or other sensitive components. Don't overdo it, or the glue will squeeze out when it dries. If you're unsure how much to use, refer to the amount shown in the video. Don't forget to apply some glue along the bottom and a little above the charging port too. Now we can start assembling the iPod. Apply a small amount of glue around the frame as well. Step 6. Close it up after testing. After confirming that everything works, close the iPod. Step 7. Wrap and let it cure. Wrap the iPod with cloth or bubble wrap. Then tie it with rubber bands and let it sit for 24 hours for the glue to cure. Tip. If you don't wrap your iPod, the rubber bands can leave permanent marks on it. After 24 hours, take it out and enjoy your iPod. If you want to open it again for further modification, you can use a hairdryer. Evenly heat the iPod to soften the glue, making it easier to take apart. Use a flat metal pry tool to separate the casing. Start prying at the gap between the charging port and the plastic back panel to avoid damage to the inside of the port and the casing. Once it loosens, lift the body off from the bottom side. Replacing the battery, if you want to replace the battery, Cut the two wires connected to it using scissors. If you're using ceramic scissors, you can cut both positive and negative wires at the same time. If you're using metal scissors, cut them one by one. Metal scissors conduct electricity, so cutting both at once can cause a short circuit. After cutting the wires, remove the old battery. Take out your new battery and insert the cable into the connector.
gently open the black latch. Insert the cable all the way in. Then close the latch. Stick the battery onto the back panel and that's it. The battery has been replaced. 